Hi everyone, it's Rachel and Anthony Hello. from Don't Crop Me Now. We're just going to do an update just to show you what's happened over the last couple of weeks. At this time of year, we're going into the third week of September now, things happen very quickly on your allotment. I don't know what it's like where all of you may live, but we've noticed over the last week it's actually really cooling down and you can see the effect that has on the crops. So I just want to show you a few jobs that we have been doing over the last couple of weeks and also to show you hopefully the changes in those crops since our um, last full tour. So one of the jobs that we have been doing is clearing crops that are finished off and so the more eagle-eyed of you amongst you may have may notice that we had some sprouting broccoli plants just here in this bed that we'd been collecting seed from. And in fact, they would actually started to sort of regrow really well, but we had to get them out. So we've got those out and we put them on the compost. So as you can see, we've piled up a lot of material onto our compost heaps. In fact, uh, a week or so ago, we put lots on and I put a thermometer in there and it was reaching some really high temperatures. But this weekend, we have pulled out a lot of those, like those um, purple sprouting broccolis and we've chopped them up. And also we've been tidying up the strawberry plants. Another big difference that uh, we have noticed is how quickly these bean crops are drying are coming on. We've got some dwarf beans behind us and they actually look just about at the harvesting stage you can see that they look completely dry and crispy and all the green elements of the plants have gone however quite a few of the wigwams are still having a good go at growing if anthony has a look and some of them may be a few weeks yet to harvest now this time of year is a brilliant time to pot up those strawberry runners so you can see where we could do the tidy we had some of them on the compost but we have potted up some runners that we will grow on to make a new bed for next year and at the moment we've just put these into our cold frame what i tend to do to uh, get the strawberry runners is i cut the runners completely off the plants and i just literally make a hole and i dip them even to a spare space on the ground or into a pot that is full of compost I find the strawberries are just so good they just want to grow anyway so there's lots of talk about pegging strawberry runners down and all that sort of thing I don't bother to do that at all they pretty much try to root just to anything that they will attach themselves to so I find this is a really effective and quick easy method now in probably the last couple of tours we have been talking about the fact we need to get on top of this grafted apple tree which was growing absolutely massive so we have not pruned this properly what i have done is taken out from all these new shoots a good proportion of the new growth from this year it's been so vigorous on this plant because we grafted onto quite an established trunk if anthony can see down here this means the tree had a brilliant amount of reserves and therefore sent out these new shoots on the grafted sections really 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 in a crazy manner in the winter however we will need to thin this tree down i just wanted to get it so the branches were off the path it was a little bit neater and we will tackle the main pruning probably around january another priority really over the last couple of weeks has been collecting as much seed as we can once it starts to get really wet here and we get that massively we are in south manchester it becomes more difficult to collect the seed so for example we've been collecting this seed off these giant sunflowers and i will put these on a tray at home ensure they completely dry and keep that seed for growing next year we've also been tackling our potatoes and I know I did a separate video on this, but blight definitely struck right at the end of the season, later than we ever have had before here in South Manchester. But we've cut the tops off all of these potatoes so we can store them for winter. Now is also a great time to prune lavender. And once we've sorted out those potatoes, it gives a good job um, to be able to do this. So if you're going to be pruning your lavender, try not to cut back as far as the very woody centres because that can mean it can even kill off your plants and will stop them forming a nice shape for next year. But as you can see here, we've cut these back, cut all of the flowers where they have finished, and these should sit nicely over winter and start to grow in for a brilliant display in a, quite a nice, hopefully, sort of little head shape for spring. 
We cleared out our pretty unsuccessful sweet corn, but we did actually in the end get a few cobs and they were very tasty. And we just left these flowers in that were just planted underneath the crop for a bit of colour and cover. And don't forget to keep on top of harvesting those awesome raspberries. They are in full harvest now, as you can see here, absolutely brilliant and perfect but they continue to crop and they continue to crop really quickly. And as soon as the rain gets on these fruits, they tend to give up and go a bit mouldy and then that will stop your plant producing. So at least once or twice a week, we've been going over the entirety of our raspberry crop to try and make sure that we don't miss those tasty raspberries. So we've tied it up quite a bit in, in this fruit cage. We've sort of weeded around where there was quite a lot of weeds around the paving area. And I probably won't do much more in here until we do all the pruning that tends to take place after Christmas. We've been still keeping on top of this polytunnel. And as you can probably notice, I can actually get on the path now. So we've taken all those onions home that have cured and they are currently hung up in our garage for storage. But we need to keep eye, an eye on these plants that again are very heavy croppers. For example, these cucumbers you can see forming here and on the plant there are so many. So you do need to keep a really good eye on these and pick them as they are coming to that perfect harvest time. And we have really started making a decent harvest on these chilies. Just the odd one or two for general cooking, but they are coming on amazingly and i expect by the end of october we are going to be harvesting chilies by the hundred and we have harvested the sort of last bits out of this summer brassica bed and as you can see we left the sort of smaller secondary stalks to go to seed and i've just uncovered this now you can see there's a lot of white fly that were underneath the plants we're going to let this go to seed see if we can capture uh, a decent amount to have a sort of sustainable, sustainable supply of uh, these ones are the this purple broccoli and also calabans. Here are the onions but alongside those onions we've also got a lot of our produce that we've got uh, really into this season's canning and preserving so we've been adding to those supplies and we saw those trees but we also harvested the majority of our apples and pears and I've got this apple rack, but I've also had to put them just about everywhere at the moment. So if you've enjoyed the video today, please like, comment and subscribe. It only takes a minute, but it really helps our channel. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.